And we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to humancolony.org, Hukalo TV. Uh, today is April. Oh, it's not April anymore. It's May 7th, isn't it now? May 7th, 2016. And um, this is the Saturday uh, free webinar. So I'm going to pass things over to Sabrina. Sabrina, are you ready to say hey for everybody? Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Um, welcome everybody to the Saturday webinar and um, today we have, um, let's see, Krellick, we have Nabila, Neil, Sam, Safira is in the house, Sharon, Will, and with Jim today we have a surprise, Brian. Our beloved Brian Yay. is there with Jim today. And of course, oh, look Logan. at him, Logan. <laughs> How are you? Pretty good. Ready to hang out today. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, we have other members sitting with Jim today, which I will yes. let Jim. Okay, I have Mark and. Helga and Mark, <laughs> and I can't see him. Erica and Barbara, I think is that, and and Raymond. Okay, sorry, I can't see over there. It's I know. Did I miss anybody? Okay, and then Brian and Logan, of course, and welcome. They're from Indiana, correct? So this is uh, Brian's second visit, but Logan's first visit. So that's very cool. So. Welcome, you guys. It's really great to have you. We've been having a good time, and um, it's it's going to be a good day. So it's beautiful today here. Beautiful sunny weather, a little crisp outside, but it's still beautiful. It's going to go up to in the high 60s today, so that's a wonderful thing. So I just wanted to let you, everybody know that there has been some requests for some uh, channeling people. Uh, the El or the Elohim uh, Prince, since he has been <laughs> just recently passed, and uh, who else was there? Spirit Coast, and I'm anybody else? No, we want to hear from and Takur, and Takur, and um, if, I, uh, I don't I know who's gonna what. I request uh, Blibu from the Canine Society. Oh, Blibu, Blibu. Yes, I know who that is. Yeah. Blibu from the Canine Society. He's a, a sort of an official kind of person, correct? Yes, a councilman. Oh, he's a councilman. Okay, very cool. Excellent. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, you know, we haven't speak spoken to to a Pleiadian. In yep. a while. Uh, well, Tapet is a Pleiadian, and these oh, no, these do a yell. Uh, okay. And Lakesh is a Pleiadian. Yeah, Lakesh is a Pleiadian. So uh, we haven't. Uh, Lakesh was here last week, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah Lakesh, Lakesh has, but from the other. Okay. Races, there are several. Yeah. We channel with several Pleiadians. Jean Jean, which is she goes by Georgette. She likes the human name Georgette, but her real name is Jean Jean. Uh, Rujan, uh, Yushara, and Arusha, and Kalish are all Canadians. Oh. Safira said that a tall white would be nice. Oh, and Doctor. Yeah, the Doctor. So, and he um, was a Korean. Yeah. Oh, so, Grindel. Somebody mentioned Grindel. Oh, no. <laughs> we won't say I, I, I love you. <laughs> yeah. Sure is requesting yeah. King Shalomon. King Solomon? No, Shalomon. It's different. S H A L O M O N. Shalomon. I think he means Solomon. It might be Solomon, but it's spelled uh, Shalomon. Uh, Sheer, do you mean Solomon? King Solomon? Because you requested King Solomon before. Yeah. I don't think he's in the room. No, he's right. typing it on Skype. Hang on. 
He says, no, it's correct. My bad. He does mean Solomon. Okay. Yes, okay. okay. That's what I thought. Uh, All right. Thanks, let's see who comes. <laughs> okay. Let's start. Who wants to start with a blessing or a prayer? I I will do one. Excellent. Thank you. Um. It's best to start with uh, the proper uh, security, the proper protection, and the proper uh, balance of spirit here. So that's I would love you for you to do a, a prayer. So I will mention this. Um, I'm going to be doing a blog um, oh. for a, a. I guess it's 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 like a blessing for yourself, uh, a state of being. Um, that are being given to me every day. Wow, um, wonderful. So I will read one, and it says, I will love it all today. I will walk in amazement and wonder. I will look for little things that can make me happy and smile inside my heart. I will look for a sign on the street that God has my back. I will keep in the treasure chest of my heart and put it out when it's needed. I will love my parents today regardless of what had happened or who they are or who they were. I will have compassion for the homeless today for he is there to teach me something. I will value the universe for the universe values me. That's wonderful. Very beautiful. Did you write that yourself? It was given to you by source? It was given to me by Archangel Gabriel. He's the one who gave it to me. Certainly sounds like it from a very high source. Thank you very much. Anybody else have an, a prayer or anything that you want to say before we start? Anyone? But I, I would like to add something else. Um, I would like to give thanks to Guru Dan. Um, I think sometimes he goes underappreciated and I would like to say thank you Dan for what you do. Thank you for being so giving and so generous towards everyone. Um, I think sometimes we miss doing that. Um, being appreciative of the ones in our lives that are always there for us regardless of what happened. Um, thanks to Jim for doing this, uh, for being so given to everybody so free. Um, when others, you know, sometimes are not as, as given, you've always been there for all of us and have taken your day, your Saturday mornings, to freely give to us information to help us grow and to help us see beyond what we see every day, what used to be, and open doors for us that we would have never dreamed of in the past. So I would like to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And um, Slava, I would like to thank you for always being there for us also. You work behind doors all the time, and we don't often see you here. Um, and you put a lot of work, a lot of effort into the website and making sure that things are always running on the website. Um, and also, Max, thank you. Thank you for this idea. Um, thank you for putting the whole thing together. Um, cause, nice. Yeah, for doing all of that. So. Thank you, everybody. And Roy, wherever you are, thank you. Yes, there's so many people that work so hard all the time. Guru Dan, you have no idea how much Guru Dan actually works. He works with me, and he works with the whole community, and he's always out there, and I really appreciate that. He holds a, He's like some of the glue that holds us together. So... Um, and thank you, Sabrina, and everyone. I just, you are right. There's so many people to thank here. It is just a beautiful group of people that give constantly and uh, with their heart, and it's a beautiful thing. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And um, 
All right, I think I'm going to do a meditation and see who comes unless somebody else has something to say. Thank you. Uh, and all fine. right, I will see you in a little bit. I hope you everybody has a good session and you learn something from somebody. And uh, I'll see you later. Thank you, Jim. Much love. We are L. Welcome. We have come by your request. What is it that you should have us inform you about? We were wondering if you could give us an update on, on the financial issues. Your financial issues grow more dire every day. However, there are those there that are supporting your financial systems with everything that they have because first of all they do not want it to collapse quite yet they have not stabilized their position for after the collapse you see once there is a collapse there will be many vying for the, a struggle for control afterwards and we know this and it is very evident and no matter where we go that this happens, it is always the way that some malevolent beings will want to come forth to bring their idea to fruition, but then there are others that want to have their ideas bring, brought forth, but our ideas are the ones that are most successful. So we will be integrating those thought processes as soon as the collapse happens. Now the update on when, this is very unclear. The reason for that is because there are so many decisions to be made and we cannot tell you the future exactly. There is an estimated time period of course and there are things that need to happen in succession that will cause the implosion actually I called it a collapse. You can actually call it an implosion because the systems will actually fall upon themselves not being able to support all the financial loss. You see, everyone will owe everyone, which is already the case, and in one way or another it will not be able to be paid back and therefore cause no more flow or a flow that is so stifled that it cannot survive. So there, do you understand this? Therefore, this is coming soon, but I would not be the one that wants to say exactly what day that will be. But it will be a day not far in the future. And there are many of those malevolent societies even that are holding the finances up to benefit themselves. But you realize after the collapse of the economy, no, nothing but gold will probably be valuable. 
even gold for a while will not have much value because there will be not much to buy. There will not be much to trade for because most people will be stealing. Keep your... There will be many things that you will be able to trade. I do not want to say all the things, but batteries will be one of them because all the different electricities and things will be taken away for a point, and so you'll be using batteries for light for a good period of time. Also candles, canned food, things of this nature, and water, of course. So keep these things not as a stockpile for a long period of time, but for the initial period when it, the first collapse comes, you will need it for at least a few weeks. Not indefinitely. Things will come back. Electricity will come back because there will be those that know how to do this and they will do it for free because it will benefit them as well. You understand this. There will be those that know how to do some things that will benefit themselves. But as they are doing it, it will also benefit others because they have the knowledge of how to correct it. It has always been the case with every time we have seen this. So therefore, there will be some things that will return. You will not be paying for your electricity, light, or, or whatever, but you will be getting it to some degree. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, my question is with... Um the probability of the future and say in the 2020s um, according to the earth uh, calendar um, would most likely by then will we have some more uh, extraterrestrial systems that it would be by then more accepting of the governments to allow to come there, in to assess you the see earth. that is one of the other fears is when the when the system collapses that the aliens will come in and take control because they know that the aliens are here and they know that the aliens have some uh, power over some people because many people support them. However, the aliens will only support humanity in the ways that they ask for. They will not be overbearing and they will not directly interfere with this action because it is part of your history the way it should be and cannot be interfered with otherwise changing the whole future of your world. So it is not going to be that way, although your governments may think so. Does that make sense? You cannot, they cannot be part of this negativity. Yes, there are negatives, wor working aliens working in your governments, but this is something that is part of history already. And the future has been changed by it already. So that is not something that we are concerned with at this time. Your timeline will continue as far as that is concerned. Now, the timing of this particular event will be very specific. It has to be in order to be, to happen. There has to be many things that happen at once. It's a, a succession of uh, events that will lead to this. And therefore, you will probably have some heads up as to what when that will be because you will see things happening in a way that is not normal. You're already seeing some of these events. But they must happen in succession. That is the key. They must happen one right after the other for it to be the domino effect that w is necessary for this particular collapse. What other questions? I see there is some. Yes. Yes, my question has, hello, thank you for being here. My question has to do <clears throat> with the political system and the um, upcoming election, how that plays into the financial collapse exposure, how Trump being the wild card bringing Hillary out and um, the whole political system tied into the collapse. Can you speak about that? Yes. No matter who takes office in your fall, it will be a calamity in the sense that there will be a group of people that are not happy, a large group. 
So if, if Trump wins, a large group will be very unhappy. If Hillary wins, a large group will be unhappy. This will be a part of the financial collapse, yes. And it's a positive thing. So yes, it is, a po it is a positive shakeup, but not many people will see it that way. I can see it the universal perspective. The universal perspective is that the United States, as you are being seen at this time is a laughing stock with your candidates. Um, some have spoken about uh, a major shift in financial at the end of this year. Can you speak about that at all? We can. There will always be major financial shifts. That does not necessarily mean collapse. But there will be major financial shifts according to many predictions, yes. That does not say that, that a total collapse is happening that soon. However, many changes will be happening. Like I said, when the collapse comes, it will be a succession of events. This will be one or two events at most, not the succession that we are speaking of. Now, we are also seeing the dismantling of projects under the earth. We are looking to see we are looking and seeing that things are changing under your planet surface. Yes. So there is some things that uh, we are paying close attention to and not sure all the reasons why this is happening. But they are definitely disconcerting in the sense that progress is being destroyed. Are you speaking about the malevolent or the inner earth positive beings coming to the surface and showing themselves? This is all them? things. Yes, this is all manners of malevolent and beneficial are now <coughs> excuse me being disrupted from an inner earth perspective. Sapphire? Is there another question? Yes, Sapphire had a question. Speak. Um, I don't know if maybe her mic is not she is not able to be heard. Functioning at the moment. Um, yes. Okay, so we'll, well, what's meant to happen at the end of the year to um, is that kind of like the build up for the for the collapse. There are many things that are part of the build up for the collapse. That may be just one thing. There are several things that must happen before the collapse comes. If you want to consider that one thing, yes, it will lead to several things, but it is one thing, yes. Um, and do you have any advice for us in terms of preparation or prayer or... Um, that we can do? There are many preparations that I have mentioned. Please stockpile some things for the very first few weeks of the, the downfall. Now, when you find that there, it is coming to a time when things are very tight among, that the stock market is falling daily, to a, but not a great deal but falling slowly daily in increments that are getting larger and larger, then I would move myself to, away from the city areas. The city areas will be filled with looting, rioting, and theft. If you prefer to be in the country, of course, eventually the homes in the country will be overtaken as well, but not at first. It will be the cities that will be first destroyed. Would the 
turn on their own people, like the Civil War and turn Of course. Okay. Rooting, looting and rioting always are turned on their own people. I don't see any nuclear war. Though. I think that would be removed. I don't think that it has to come to that. The aliens have taken care of nuclear problems. There are, it is necessary for three people at least to detonate anything nuclear. At this point, they are able to stop one of the people from turning the key. And there is no way to work around this, so there isn't that much devastation? There is. We are working on that all the time, as well as several other species and alliances. Giving, having meetings and group get-togethers and group conversations about how things can be done more peacefully, how the collapse can be done in a better way, because there are some that are light workers that might be affected and they would not want this. And there, so therefore, the fewer deaths, the better, and the fewer amount of casualties, the better. And so they have been working on this daily to bring down the casualty count. And at this point, they have brought it down by about 7%, which you may not think is a lot. But for the time they have been working on it, it is a great deal of success. And therefore, we are very pleased to tell you that we are working with them um, daily. There has never been a a group to help a society or a group of beings as much as they are helping you. Some worlds must go through this fairly alone, having only maybe <laughs> the presence of a, two or three other species around to maybe try to give them a hand. You, on the other hand, have several species alliances, groups, all trying to help. And this is a great benefit to you. And so this collapse might not be as painful as once originally thought. Thank you for that. Yes. Can, can you name, some, we're familiar with Kirk from here, can you name some of the other groups who are helping us? Of course. Ashtar Command, the, Com the uh, Federation of Light, the Galactic Patrol, the the councils in Octoria, the whale and dolphin assemblies, many others, the Julia, Juliana and Giuliano on their ships and their alliances, many, many. There are many very strong alliances that are working with you. Also the, reptil the friendly reptilian alliance, the friendly gray alliance, I mean that's what we call it. They have their own names. But I will not like to translate that into your language because it doesn't sound really very helpful. But it is. They are definitely working with you. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll ask if there, do you have any advice for light workers besides bringing the light? Yes, the light workers can help each other. And bring light as you bring light to yourself and to your community, you can actually can communicate better with one another. Now, you see, this is the other thing that uh, is going to be coming down to you is one of the ways that can be very helpful for this time when things collapse is that you are on the right thought process. To make things better. Not that you are going to make things work by panicking, becoming part of the problem, but we are going to train you and give you the spiritual understanding that you these the better your actions are, the greater the lives that will be saved. So you are very responsible not only for yourself, but for the education of others that might be in your area that you would want to see saved as well. So as you move 
your communication out, it will be a sort of evangelism, but not in the sense that we're, you're bringing them to a belief system, but rather bringing them to an understanding of how to save themselves. Yes. Thank you, because there are timelines as well that we have to work with. Some will have more devastation, some will not. I'm assuming there'll be different timelines and realities that come into play. Yes, there will be, as was explained by someone to your people, that the timelines do melt into one another in some ways. They are, they do have some definite. When you are in a timeline, it is you are moving in a particular direction. However, with certain d decisions, you can move and phase out of your timeline into others. So therefore, yes, this timeline is fairly solid with a direct movement of most of the people. Of course, there are people phasing in and out all the time, but that does not pull the direct timeline out of phase. Only the individuals. That does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Safira asks if uh, sh she's saying there is an ancient, ancient, Asian uh, prince who claims to have enough gold to back up all the world debt and bring balance back to the world economy. Is this true? And is it being suppressed? When that time comes for. Um, this to happen, he, he should not be so foolish as to think that his people are going to, to back him with this because they are going to be frightened and they are going to be attacked as well as any other people. So this gold will be stolen. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he has the gold to do it. He has about 85% of what he speaks of. What can okay. we do to change our thoughts and attitudes about finances and resources to become more sharing and supportive of each other? How, can you give us a little more detail on how we can actually empower each other now uh, to better prepare for this event? A wonderful question, but let me put it this way. You must let people know that their actions and contributions to society make a difference. Many people do not believe that what they do have anything to do with the full society. However, their connection to God is direct from God to them and if they can perceive that that is the true action that is to be taken, then their attitudes will change about money because money will change altogether anyway. And if they are aware of this, if they are aware that the thing that will keep them alive is not money, but friendships, love, teams, work, then perhaps, and just perhaps, they will move their finances to a secondary thought process. This is difficult for many because money rules your world and this is what is the problem with your world at this time because it is a god in the sense that you cannot do anything without it. You cannot survive without it. You cannot move one way or the other without it. It is in constant demand. It's constantly spoken about and it's constantly complained about, but yet, if they were to change focus, let's change focus and see that humanity is actually the more important thing. Humanity and the survival of your timeline is more important than anything that you can buy or seek or material goods because all of that will be taken away in some manner. The material wealth that you have now is not going to be the same. It's going to change. And you will have to adjust to that. But if you can adjust with the heart to be a community, a loving community, to understand instead of argue about what is mine, 
but to understand that what is yours can also be everyone's and it can be a good thing. That is something that people do not understand and cannot give up, is their selfish desire to have it all or, or to protect their own. Oh, survival. Survival. survival of the fittest, I think it was called. But the thing is about that, it is not going to help them survive. It is going to get them destroyed. Their selfishness, if someone comes up to you with a gun and you won't give them the things that you have, you're going to die for those things. Does that make sense to you? Why die for materialistic things and for money? You should not want to die for those things, but for your family, for your friends, for your community. These things are perhaps worth dying for, but not for money and materialistic things. But your thought processes have got to change for this to happen. And there will be many teachings about this in the future. But it is not a bad thing, and it is not a thing of sadness, or it is not a thing of ugliness, but it's a thing of beauty. Chicha, continue. Um, Safira had another question here. Um, is the world currency going to be reevaluated? Uh, she says she doesn't remember. Is the workers going to be reevaluated? The currency, the work of currency. Course. It's not working. Of course. If it's not working, it must be reevaluated. It's there are societies that have no currency. There are societies that have no no things like this but they trade knowledge and technology and information and love and uh, giving of certain services for what they need instead of having money because the money itself becomes the object of desire instead of all the other things that can be given instead. You should be desiring of maybe help in your home or desiring some technology to help you do something or, or, or something else other than just the one thing. There should be many other ways to barter other than just money. Education, learning, things of this nature, privilege. Yes. Uh. Uh, Guru Dan asked if it would be a good time uh, now to to get a car that runs on diesel or biodiesel fuel. <laughs> it would be a good time to get a car that runs on Earth. Uh, just throw Earth in the tank and then it runs. But because you're not going to be that's not going to be available for the first few weeks. Um, would that help? Yes, cold fusion? cold fusion would help, yes, if you have that sort of thing available to you. It would appear that I am finished here. Um, there was one more question here. Yes? Um, Sheer asked, my question is, after the collapse, first concept, will it finally happen? And how much is it going to shake Israel? And what about those... Shake. It will shake every country, not equally, because some are poor and some are rich. It will shake the rich countries more, more strongly or more stronger than it will shake the poor countries because they're used to their poorness, but they will still be shaken, all countries, because all countries do trade and all countries are now in debt, almost all. Yeah. Actually, Puerto Rico right now, it's it's so much debt that I don't know what's going to happen there at the moment. Yes, there, there, every, every inch of the earth will be shaken in one way or another, unless you are totally 
uh, away from society in every way, shape, or form, then you may not know anything is happening. Okay. But if you are, then you're killing for your food and eating plants. And you have no electricity, and you're using the forest as your outhouse. So being out in the country with a little farm would be good. <laughs> um, you say so. <laughs> um, he also said, he also asked, what about those who have connections with ETs? Could they ask for protection or help? ETs can protect in some ways, but they cannot house you or bring you off the planet. This is not part of the prime, they call it prime directive, that is a good word for it, that they cannot interfere with the actual maneuvering and challenges of the planet because it is not their planet to maneuver. They cannot change the history of your planet. Mm. And uh, Guru Dan was also asking for how long will this last, the survival time? That is what we are working on. Right now, it would appear like three to five weeks of delirium at first. And we went, that is the part we want to cut down. Because after that, things will start to take shape again. But we'd like to cut down on the delirium portion. And so far, they have cut down 7%. Yeah, because wouldn't wouldn't the the I know the poor are used to living in a lot of these conditions, um, but wouldn't they also suffer a lot more? The poor. Poor, poor. They're used to suffering, dear. <laughs> they will not suffer more than they're used to suffering. Much more it will be the rich that will suffer the most. Okay. Um, do you have any suggestions about heating during the winter? That was a question somebody asked. Buy a lot of matches and lighters. <laughs> and live near a lot of wood. Um, Another question was, could, uh, could you please say the year would this could happen or a window? It, that, that could be, a, you see, I cannot t say that. And the reason is, is because that is not determined. It, it is determined by your government decisions and the way that things are supposed to happen. We know what will happen. We don't know exactly when it will happen, but we know that it is within a certain time period. And if we gave you that time period, it could change because then people would have different thoughts about that and make the wrong decisions and change that time period. Does that make sense yeah. to you? It's yeah. all relative. I thought it was decided, though, that it was by, uh, by 2025. Well, we had picked 2027, actually, we picked. Um, and that was a, an, a generality. And we told you that as well. But, and we picked that because of your numerology systems and belief systems. We, but we see that it will probably happen well before then. Yeah, I can see that, actually. I can see it much closer than that. Yes, we, we've determined that that original uh, thought process was fl very flawed and that it will probably have happened well before that. And also, that was almost three years ago that we said that, so. Yes. Um. Does anyone over here on the web have any questions on this matter? Yeah, I have a question regarding 
Um, is any of this going to be in conjunction with the ice age to be expected, or would you give me some information on that? It will not. There will not be um, anything that quickly. The reason is as it's just not due quite yet. So do not worry about that for, uh, for this period of time. That won't, will not be coming quite yet. Anybody else have any other questions? There is someone okay. else here wanting to come in. Okay. Well, uh, we want to thank you for coming and giving us this information. Um, yes, I, I do not want to seem like a doom and gloom predictor because that is not what I am predicting. I'm predicting that things will be much better than they are predicted. So um, I am actually here to tell you that there is some positive changes coming in this area and at this time it looks like there is three to five weeks of delirium but by the time that it comes that could be well less. Okay. Yeah, that that makes me feel better. It should. Uh, we are working on it with many. Um, now, be well and encourage each other to be uh, wonderful. To, to be in the positivity that you should be in because that will definitely help the scenario a great deal. Yes, and it will give a better world to the children. Yes. And that's really what encourages me. Excellent. Thank you. Uh. Huh. Mm. I have very little time. Welcome. I am the one called Prince. Welcome, Prince. And I want to follow this gentleman because he talks about love. And love is something that I am very much in favor of. I am igniting souls. This is what I want to do in the afterlife. I want to bring together those that are meant to be together. Ignite the twin flames. Ignite the love that should be, instead of bringing animosity to the world, bring connection. Bring the music of the soul. I sing about the music of the soul more than once. And for me, the connection was beautiful. And I will be working with all of you to bring a greater connection to this world that you live in. Now that I am over here and I can see how I can work with you, join me in my thought to be one with the world. John and I are both on that same mission, and George, and Jimmy. We're all here for that. Those are the names you may know us by. We have other names. Names aren't important, but actions are. 
And love is important. And I've been working all my life. You may not know that I've worked all my life to bring together the world in, in many ways. And that is why I come to you now to bring you together in the music of the heart. The music of love. The music of the soul and in unity as one huge community. I can't wait to see all the things that will happen. Oh, Michael, of course. <laughs> You're one of the same. We are all working together, and we are all going to be close by. So we are going to be channeled, talked about, and encouraging all of the world, and you will not stop hearing about us until it happens. Somebody is asking if, uh, so you're talking about uniting. Um, can you speak of the difference between soulmates and twin flames? Does there have to be a difference? A soulmate can be that one that resonates with your soul more than your body. And a twin flame is supposed to resonate with your body and your soul together. But the thing is, it doesn't always work that way. The way that things have changed on your planet for over the centuries and over the belief systems of your centuries has changed things. However, soulmates and twin flames exist in abundance on your world. And there will be a time for unity. I must go. I am not totally processed, but they let me come and say hello. Thank you for all the Thank you. music. Thank you. And Thank now you. there is one other even greater than I. Thank you for coming. Dearly beloved. <laughs> I had to say that. We're gathered here for this thing called life. Yes. Go. <laughs> Let's go crazy. <laughs> Let's go wild. <laughs> Party like it's 1999. There's so many messages. <laughs> I gotta go. Okay. Okay. Someone called me. I'm the one whose name was Solomon. I've had many names since then, but that was the life that set me apart from all other lives. Is there a question that I may answer for someone? He, he is not in the room at the moment. Um, I sent him a message. Um, so then I should go.
Uh, uh, I am I am a visitor. I know. Thank you. Welcome. I am a visitor and I live sometimes in the forest. I find it calming. And the animals there are not afraid. I do this? see people, and they sometimes see me. I shouldn't actually be there in the physical, but I am harming no one, and I am not in public view. I'm your one. Yeah. Are you the one who they say roams the forest as the watcher? As we know, Bigfoot, Oh, uh, no. That is one you call Sasquatch. I am reptilian. There is someone in this room that called me. It might have been me or Barbara. Here she comes. I caught you. Ah. Uh, Barbara. Is it you and your animals that I see? Yeah. I see you. Do you see me? Yes. See you. What questions do you have for me? Is I'm just curious as to why I see you, not so much that, but how long have you been around me where I can see you? I was told you were my I've been around many years. That portion of the forest is very entertaining to me. And also I do like to look upon society from a distance. And yes, I am one of your guides in the sense that I can help you with some things. I ease your pain occasionally. Okay. Because I see you suffer. And I do not like that. But your animals also have been suffering recently. Yes. And I am trying to help them as well. Thank you. But I can only do so much. But I want to say to the people of your planet, thank you. You are a good species. I know that there are problems here as with many worlds. But your intentions are mostly good. If you could take yourself out of the picture sometimes and look at the world, you might see that it is a very troubled place, but that you can help it just with your attitude and your thought processes your prayers and energies. You give off good energy and want to help others, even though yourself is very ill. I find that to be one of the beauties of humanity. Even though some of you may be feeling very ill or weak, you want to help others. Sometimes that is the way I am as well but it is the way of our people to be that way. At least now it is our way. It's not always been our way. But I wanted you to understand. I am observing, I am what you might call on your planet, a bit of a loner. I like to observe and study and think rather than interact much of the time. I know there are many out there that are constantly 
interacting, and I will let them do that work because it is for them to do. My job is to be who I am to be, and observing and writing and becoming part of your planet in a way that makes me feel comfortable and safe helps me with my own life as I'm from not from here but from very far away and from a very different kind of place and a different kind of topography a different kind of culture but yet I feel safe in the forest area, the wooded parts, mm -hmm. where I can control what happens and feel the energy of your planet and your animals and plants and trees, as you call them. I have learned to respect them a great deal. They have much information d from centuries of being alive and changing. If you learn to read the plants and the trees and the animals and their past lives, you will know that they are incredibly wise. You may not see trees and plants as having any kind of sentience. But there is history that they carry with them throughout history. Your planet is amazing. And is a great comfort to me. And I would also like to comfort you as much as possible. Because I see that you give your energy to others, even your animals. You reiki them all the time. <laughs> and yet, you yourself are not feeling so great. But the good energy that you give them makes them feel better. And so I give my energy to you as well. And to anyone who needs it that passes by. And I see others walking their animals. You call them dogs. They are really not afraid of me. When they bark, they wag their tails. <laughs> they are communicating and telling me that they see me. And I see them. Is there any questions? Yeah, um, somebody had a question about a problem that they're having with their dog. I don't know if you can help them at all, but um, Johannes, um, he said he, um, he wants to ask for direction with the problem that he has with his dog. He has itching from within. He said he's taken him to the veterinarian, but they can't find anything. And the glands are filled up with his rare and seems to suffer because of it. How old is this animal? Mm, I don't know. He didn't specify that. If it is a young animal, then I could help it, perhaps. But if it's an older animal and it is well on its way with disease throughout the body, it might be more difficult. Okay. But I will send, where is Johannes on this screen? Um, he's not here. He dropped off. Um, it's, it's less than two years old. And he's in prey. In where? Prague. Prague. Oh, Prague. Prague in the Czech Republic. I will see what I can do for you.
That is all I can say. Be well. Do you have more questions? Uh, around winter time, I was in the forest, wiping my car off. I looked down straight. I saw a tall, thin being, a person, in a black cloak, all the way down to their feet, all the way down to their hands, very tall. They were kind of walking, not like we would walk. Is that a person? They disappeared. No, that was not a person. That was someone else visiting your world in a holographic form. Now, I know who that was because we are in touch occasionally. But no one to be afraid of. But if you would see him, he is rather not beautiful to your species. But he is a friend of mine. And that is all I will tell you Excellent. at this time. I have another question. Yes. When I was 10 years old up at White River, I was confronted with a bunch of reptilians. Were you one of them? No, I was not. Those were not friendly reptilians. Okay. Those were reptilians looking to gain, I believe they were looking for hybridization materials, but they were going to gain them illegally, and therefore it was not a good thing. But they were chased off. Okay. Well, like I say, I'm so glad to talk to you. I'm glad to see you. I'd love to yeah. see you more often. Thank you. You're welcome inside my apartment. I was not going to come, but since Solomon did not stay, I decided that it would be an opportunity for me to speak. And so here I am. Are you related to any race um, interacting with our planet at the moment? Yes. Yes. I'm a, one of the friendly reptilians. They do not have a specific name according to your people, except for the friendly reptilians. However, some of our people are in the alliance of Gurkvik Nir. I am not in that alliance. I am fr a free agent, so to speak, from a different perspective. Alliances don't interest me. I'm not an alliance kind of person. I'm more of a separate kind of person. But I will do my good deeds on my own. Carl? Uh, yes, hello. Um, there's people here that are saying that um, you and I were meant to speak to each other or something similar. I am you, having a hard time understanding you. He said that there are people here that said that you and I are meant to speak with each other. And he's asking if that's so. Maybe, maybe you have some, informa some information for me. I may have. I have to know who you are first. And yes, oh yes. Perhaps one day we will speak. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I am not one to speak a lot. And I have spoken quite a lot. Okay. Well, thank you. I Thanks will. I am feeling a little uncomfortable, so I will go now. Thank you for coming very much. I love you. And I love you all very much, but from a distance. <laughs> Do you have a name? What did you say? Uh, somebody asked your name. <laughs> that is all right. I do not want a lot of people calling me. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know my name. And so, therefore, I will leave it at that. Blessed children of the earth, be well. Thank you. Hello. Welcome back, Jim. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm going to grab some water for a second. Hi, Jim. Hi, how are you? Good. They called me back. Um, what time is it? It's 11.22. Oh, guess what? I have a surprise for you. Do you want to? I'm going to let Logan channel for a little while. Is everybody okay with that? Yay! Yes. Yes. I, I think that I, I would love for him to channel for you all. Um, he is 10 years old. He'll be 11 in July, 16th. But how long have you been channeling? Um, for at least a year now. He's been channeling for at least a year now. And I would like to give him a little time on Human Colony. So, uh, everyone, Logan Sims, I will bring it over to him. Good job, Logan. Welcome, now, Logan. I, there are some rules and regulations for this one. Uh, do not ask any questions. The entities that are going to come through Logan are going to just talk. They are not going to answer any questions at this time. They can uh, give you some advice, but that's about it. Otherwise, if I go to questions and try to figure out what's going on, it could hurt my mental state a little bit, but only for a temporary time. <laughs> He's still very young, and uh, channeling is still new, of course, and... Um, I'm sure that one day he's going to be one of the one of the great channelers, but right now he's still learning, and we're giving him a, a chance to uh, uh, branch out right now. So bless you, and we'll be with you. Do it. He's going to do a little meditation, and um, remember, no questions, please. Can they hear him okay? Can they hear him okay? Oh, he may need to. Speak out there for a second and see if they can hear you real well. Or do you need this? We hear. Can you hear me? I, can't, I put it on so it's comfortable. Okay. I don't know. That's uh, fine. It's fine. I can't see what I'm doing. I can't see it either. Um, hello. Okay. Oh, 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 oh there's. We can we can hear you. Okay, how's that? Um, it's okay. Okay, if they can, if you can hear him, that's cool. He's. <laughs> okay. All right. Can you, um, can you hear me I. Okay? Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Um, I have a cat that wants to come through. Uh, Chronox and a couple other guys. Um. Whoever wants to, go ahead. Whoever wants to come through, we'll we'll just allow them to to pick and decide. Hello. 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 I am what the channel do last night. I'm the cat. You're the cat. Yes. Could you speak up a little bit for us? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, I'm the cat. I don't have a name. Uh, Logan like would like me to come through, so I am here now. Hello. Hello. Welcome. What do you have to ask or tell us? Um, 
You were talking about some very um something about the community with the whole disruption. What was it? Of the collapse of the economy? Yes, the collapse of the economy. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Um us cats will be watching very, very closely. House cats, anything. They'll be watching. I'll be watching this one in particular. I would not select it to see your economy go down. <clears throat> I would not want to see this. But this is what your planet needs to go through. It will go through its time. Uh, this is a positive thing. And I know um, whoever came through said this. This is a positive thing for the money system to change. I don't like the money system either. It's all about, I have this. My money right uh, I don't know uh, where I was going on that one, but it's technically like that sometimes. Usually, it can have some peaceful things to it, but the money thing, it needs to change for the majority of it. Uh, there is a loss in connection right now. Uh, One moment, I need to get connected again. My voice is kind of going in and out at the moment. Okay, I'm back. Now, what was I talking about? Oh, yes. Um, do you have any questions for me? What do you think of humans? They're interesting. They're interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, Have you met a lot of humans? Uh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, some are tall. Some are small and medium. I kind of like your civilization because there's not one state where you just stay at that tall for a while. Usually we grow up and everybody stays the same height. So it can get annoying. Do you observe, Logan, are you coming to a spaceship or dimensionally other planet? Oh no, I'm coming from this planet. Oh, you're on the planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm in the form of a cat right now. Third dimension? dimension? Fourth dimension. Fourth. Far fourth. Somewhere around there. Since Logan is kind of connected to that, I can connect to him. He just realized it. Now he has a better connection to the fourth, which I am now connecting with him a lot better. Cool. Yes. Humans are very, very interesting. The only thing that kind of is disappointing about the planet is the wars. On my planet, we don't have that many wars. I mean, sure, there's the Siamese military, there's the... There's a whole lot of militaries, but there's no wars. Well, there's not a lot. So far, we've only had three major wars. And there are four, four, four wars in particular that happened, but only three were major. It is very, very peaceful overall. What's the name of your planet? I don't... We... Um, you can see it from one of the star constellations. I believe it's somewhere around Orion. Um, but... Um, I think... That's one of our other planets, I guess. Mm -hmm. Our race is kind of split up. Mm -hmm. 
we got like a plant over here, we got a plant over here, we got a plant over here, we got a plant over here. It gets confusing to get to all of them. I think you're building like a teleportation thing. Oh well. That's far down the road. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, okay. I'm half cat, half cu half human. We were born kind of human. We didn't have the ears. We didn't have the tail. We had some hybridizations to get the ears and the tail. We had the cat hair when we were born. We had like, uh, we didn't have paws. We don't have paws. That would be impossible to eat salmon. Salmon is the most wonderful thing in the world on our planet. Salmon at breakfast, salmon at lunch, salmon at dinner. <laughs> it's kind of a routine. For salmon lovers, it's a salmon life on our world. It's it's mostly ocean. I'll tell you that. It's mostly ocean. That's why we love salmon so much. Salmon, salmon, salmon. Even more salmon. Yeah. Uh, so how, how tall are you? Uh, I'm pretty tall. I'm about as tall as the ceiling. And I'm only 11 years, I mean, I'm only 12 years old. I'm as tall as the ceiling. What brings you to Earth? What's your purpose here? Fish. <laughs> I take care of the shrimp. Stuff. The clams. The fish. Mm, nice. The seafood. Um... Well, mo most of that. Usually it's to study the trees and the human population, see how everything's going. Because someday, we're thinking of walking on this earth, where everybody can see us. But we won't be eating fish. We'll be walking around this time. Usually we just form in the cache, just eat some fish. I'll tell you what, it's pretty good, though. But... Yeah, usually we just walk around. See we're hoping to walk around, see what's going on, actually get in on the human civilization and the future. But until then, we gotta wait, so. No shrimp till then. <laughs> Are you related to the Lyrans? The Lyrans. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, we're related to them, kind of. We're kind of human-ish. Just think of your human population. It's a little bit more advanced than this world and this population. It's a little bit more advanced. Just think of everything wider and taller. Yeah. May I ask you, please, are dogs and cats incarnated humans or humans from other um, lives because the way they look and they seem to know what we're they seem to have this like understanding especially dogs uh, I, I um, you know, um it's okay if you what was the question again the incarnation of dogs what is now if it had some dogs on this earth, are, are, have you been souls or other souls? Have I been a soul on this earth from like a cat or a dog? Oh, it's okay, honey. I, I just wanted to know if, um, in general, cats and dogs are incarnated souls. Oh. Oh. Well, not really, no. Usually, like I said, it just transforms into a little house cat and I walk around the city sometimes. <clears throat> it's pretty rare to see us. Um, sometimes we wear, uh, I can't really say what we wear. You'll, you'll know. Usually have some type of headband on. To keep the ears from popping out. Because <laughs> we had the ears popping out. We'd be out of here like, no, we, actually, we'd be in the sea by then. We'd be hunting for the fish. Um, but we'd be out of here, but, We'd be out here in no time. The ears popped up. Um, so what do you do for fun? Play with yarn balls, study, um, eat fish, of course. And, uh, yeah, play with yarn balls and stuff. 
uh, usually I'm on the computer doing math and stuff. The school is kind of the same. It's just think of kindergartners doing 6th and 7th grade math. That's kind of what it's like. Uh, yeah, I usually do that, do homework, stuff like this, that, 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 that. It's annoying. That's why I'm here. Just take a little break for now. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Um, there's someone else that wants to come in. I believe his name is Chronix. I better get out of here real quick. <laughs> uh... Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Chronix. Welcome. Mm. It's an honor to finally meet humans. For uh, some, some people know me. I believe someone in this hangout does. Uh, well, I believe Logan channeled uh, Chronox for someone in this hangout. Sabrina? I think it was, yes. Yes, oh. it was me. Yeah. You know me a little bit. But I'll explain myself. I come from a world where there is rocks and crystals. I'm on an everyday duty job. 24 hours, to say. Um, usually mining crystals and stuff. I hybridize them and then put it in this earth sometimes to up the vibration. You don't see me. Most of the times. I'm usually in the caves. You can never find me. I'm somewhere in there. Do you want to talk a little bit about crystals? Sure. So you work with parrot, peridot, ruby, sapphire, diamonds, yellow diamonds, any type of diamonds. Or it's crystals, technically. There's a couple unknown uh, crystals that I work with that I'm not going to say their names. But someday you'll discover them deep in the earth. And that's kind of what we're having problems with on our world. Trying to get that out of the ground is just hard. I know that Logan likes crystals. Um, are you the one that's been teaching him about them? A little bit. Teaching him the design, the energy, how it works. Something like that. The thing that interested me in him is how much he liked the crystals. And there you go. Found him one day, scanned the earth, there he is. He's on the map. <laughs> He's on the radar. And millions of others, too. To tell you the truth, millions, millions. Almost trillions. But he was only this. He was about the 75th kid I could find, so there you go. I like you working with the younger ones so they can have a better understanding of it. Is there something that you would like to tell? Uh, humans. Some 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 words of wisdom that perhaps yes. you would like to say. Yes. Be gentle with your crystals. They hold very, very many secrets. All you gotta do is shine the light on the right spot and there you go. You guys have a nice planet. Nice crystals, I'll tell you that. Nice design. Very, very unusual how the society works, though. But in a good way, too. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to talk with you guys. And I think this is a very, very interesting planet. Places that you have, stores, of course, the fish. 
cat likes. Um, <laughs> big piles of salmon. <laughs> um, food, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crystals, definitely. Yeah, this planet has almost anything you can imagine. I got, all I have to do is just look in the right spot next time. Walked into a store accidentally. I was out of there in no time. Didn't realize that there were humans there. Oh, well. Um, yeah. Cat had the same problem. Uh, ears popped up. He had to leave real quick. He went out the door. Um, so, yeah. Should I be going? I have one question for you. If it's not yeah. too difficult. Oh, it's not too difficult right now. I don't have to go. I'm on a break. Oh, thank you. Just problem with the drill. Again. <laughs> oh, you're so adorable. Okay, um, is there a crystal for love, for true love, between people, to balance the relationship between two people? Is there a special crystal for that? <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was one. Well, there was a couple, but there was one that interested me a lot. Um, rose quartz. Yes, rose quartz. Mm -hmm. That's one. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'd say a little bit of garnet. Oh, garnet. Okay, thank you. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's a good loving state. And it's very, very powerful, too. All you gotta do is combine ruby and sapphire, and there you go. You have... Actually, we had to work on that for a while. Um, yeah. It was a working process. Um, anybody want a crystal for wisdom? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Jasper. There's a crystal named Jasper. Um, it's a red crystal. It's for leadership and wisdom. Uh, Logan uh, wandered upon it one time. Uh, I believe it was at Mammoth Cave, those little necklaces and little bracelets. Looked at that, said wisdom something something, leadership, and yeah, it was pretty good. You can find those. That has a lot of wisdom in it. Yeah, I think there was one more. Um, no, no. Yep. What do you know? There's no more. Uh, that I can find. Right. Well, we want to say thank you. Thank you for coming, for talking to us. Uh, for being here with us and all your information about crystals. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, You're welcome. I must be going now. The drill's fixed, so I better go. Well, no, the drill's not fixed, but it's going to take a work process. It took at least 44 hours. Okay. Thank you for oh, coming. Oh, no. okay. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Appreciate Namaste. It. And um, thank you, Logan. Uh, he'll be back in a minute, probably. Okay, I'm back. Oh, jeez. How you? How you doing? Uh, pretty good. That's good. You're doing okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. Hi, Logan. Huh? Hey. Oh, I'll ask. I guess. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna move this back over here. here. Um, somebody asked me if I could bring in Takur real fast for a uh, update on whatever needs updated. So we'll we'll do that real fast, and then we'll be all done for today. Okay, Doc. Hold on, and I will bring Takur in in a second here. Logan, you did a really nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. 
Alrighty then. I'll be right back, and we'll bring Takur in just for a few questions and an update on whatever's going on. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Um, alrighty. I'm to Kerr. Greetings. Greetings. Hello, How is everyone Kerr. today? Hello. Are there questions for me? I have two questions, if I may ask. Yes. Hello, to Kerr. <laughs> this is Safira. Ah, Safira. How are you? I'm good. It's been a long time. Yes, um, it's been a while. <laughs> I have two questions. One is about aura colors. Does your race have an aura which reflects different colors according to health and emotions the way we do and if so can you give us a few colors that you have yes we still there are still auras in all the different um, dimensions that you can think of they may not be as bright colored as the third dimensional auras but they are still existent and the reason why they do exist is because there are chakras in the auras uh, as you know the silver and gold chakras and they are in all the sh all the uh, dimensions but yes the colors are lighter more of course you have the pinks and the yellows and the greens that you see around the humans and the white more it is more as you would call washed out in the higher dimensions it looks more stuff but that doesn't mean it's less powerful it's just a different shade of the similar colors that you use here or you have here on your planet. So the greens and the pinks are are very powerful. Yellow is happy. Um, I'm not sure how they uh, translate on your planet, but this is how they translate on ours. The yellows are more of a happy color. The greens are more healthy, a uh, more, more like a healthy glow or for affection sometimes and there's uh, pink is a powerful color which means that you're exuding a lot of energy and things of that nature uh, is that the same way as it is on your planet it's similar yes thank you very much thank you I have one more question because many people have questions I just want to ask to care can you help me later not now but later because I have some emotional pain and a, a karmic connection I can't get rid of and I need to in order to kind of raise my vibration uh, at the moment I, I understand wanted, can yes I can help you yes thank you thank you very much but it's up to you to finish it you it's right. your belief system but I can help guide you through that but ultimately you get rid of your own uh, problem I understand, but I'm going to be channeling later, and I feel like I can't do it well because I'm. This is holding my energy down, so I just ah. need a little help. I just need a little help with it. That's all. I understand. Thank you. Namaste. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Namaste. Oh, the update on the colonies. Someone just asked for an update on the colonies. The colonies are back in full functioning order. Also, Colony 6 is in full functioning order, which is the new energy healing colony, which uses Reiki, Qigong, uh, acupuncture, acupuncture, um, and all different forms of galactic Reiki, uh, Arcturian uh, Reiki, uh, Lyran Reiki. We do not use the X3 energy as of yet. They're considering whether it is uh, necessary because humans do not have that kind of te technology to uh, use the X3 energy properly so but we are trying to with with uh, this extra colony colony 6 we're trying to develop the galactic Reiki which we want to teach to humans that will connect 
up through fourth dimensional energy and be able to be used by all people on Earth as well as all people in uh, the fourth dimension. And so it is a little tricky because some of the symbols, some of the techniques translate very easily because they're pretty universal. They're galactic. They've been around for centuries and have been used by third, fourth, and fifth, sixth continuously for many, many centuries. There are some things that have developed into fourth dimensional uh, techniques, some things that have been developed into third dimensional techniques, fifth dimensional. We're trying to see if some of these techniques translate all the way through, and they should because of their orange, origins translate all through all the dimensions. However, we want to help them translate through all the dimensions as strongly and as most powerfully as possible. And so that takes uh, some tweaking on some of the symbol parts because, as you know, some of you learned about the Tinch Che or the Long Lasting Choku Ray or the um, Deep Healing Choku Ray. A lot of these are based on the spirals that um, are that you can create an actual vortex on the person or in the person and so spirals are very very galactic and they translate through all the different dimensions and this is a wonderful thing that we are learning so these are very positive things that we are discovering about the spiral symbols also some of the other symbols are translating all the way through as well so the Galactic Reiki is being developed on Colony 6. And also, many thing, people are getting healings there as well. But it is not the kind of healings that you would get in an operating room or that kind of thing. It is more of a... a uh, uh, you can heal some emotions. You can heal some pain. You can help relieve different things and start healing on major problems, of course. But uh, it's not like having an operation. So, but Reiki is a very valuable tool. It's a very valuable energy, and it helps to open up a lot of the different things in the brain that are used for psychic energy, for channeling, for telepathy, for telekinesis. It is the basic kind of energy. It is a, a healing kind of energy that opens up portions of the brain that are not yet open. So it is a very, very helpful and functional kind of energy. And the more that you use it, the more, the closer to uh, another an elevation of thought process you become. We're learning this from studying all the humans that use these things. Any questions? Yes, sure. She is. His audio isn't working. Okay, oh. Krellick. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes. Um, to care uh, for the past few days, the center of my body, I think, is the chak my chakras. The center of my body has been feeling different uh i want to know if there's anything that's uh that that is happening to me it, the, your which chakra is it is it the heart chakra um i don't know it's something it's in my forehead and it's in my throat and somewhere in the center of my body it sounds like you're having that you're uh connecting up the the third eye with the throat with the soul chakra with the soul or perhaps even the solar plexus chakras this is whenever this happens you're going through a change of uh, thought processes with something on your earth planet are you changing um, uh, something major in your life at this point or are you thinking of changing something major in your life well, I'm thinking of increasing my psychic abilities. Perhaps the, that is the involvement of the third eye for sure. 
So therefore, it might be working with you to help you develop something else within your system. You realize the thorough in the psychic development because when you start reading psychically, you no longer speak. And so this is a change in the throat chakra as well. Do you understand that? Yes. So, yes, it sounds like you're going through some kind of psychic change. Oh, okay. And I do have one more question. Um, is there any news for me? Any information? From, from the colonies? There is not any news from the colonies from for you, but there's news from the canine planet, and they will give you that themselves. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. There's a question in the room from a lady here, and she wanted Erica. to know, Erica wanted to know about the 11 density beings that are coming in the solar system. When yes, let me uh, translate that into there's a she is questioning about eleventh density beings that are coming into our presence or into your atmosphere actually in in the last it's it's been several months now so um, they are understanding that your enlightenment your ascension is not quite understood as well as it should be and they there's too many definitions for it and they're trying to come here to bring a unified thought to these definitions because actually it, the the definition of ascension is quite broad we make it very simple but it's more than one thing happening at a time it is the next step in your uh, your uh, evolution it is a different phase of enlightenment. It is uh, the change of the thought process for an entire planet. So there's many things that are going on and they would like people to understand that it is not just something <clears throat> they can do on their own, but it, it is a process that is the whole society brings themselves up together. <clears throat> this is something that you must realize. You cannot ascend by yourself. I mean, you, you may think that you, you can bring that process on yourself by becoming an, a greater person, but without the energies of the community, of the surroundings, of all those that are on the planet, you cannot reach a full ascension without the help of others, and that is another part of it that is misunderstood uh, because you you ascend as a culture I have a question for yes her. am I still not able to go to the colonies because of my health no you, they are taking you they're going to take you okay. they are taking you they have made uh, some improvements on how things are going and you are definitely going to come. And actually, they attempted to bring you once already, but you said no that night because of there was something going on. So, but you will be coming very shortly. Sure. Sheer. Greetings, my friend. Are you there? Mm, Sam. Hello, Takara. Hello, t Sam. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. And yourself? I am very well. Okay. Can you provide us some update on what's going on around the world? And especially in Southeast Asia, they seem to be uh, drying up and animals are dying over there, which that's uh, unusual because it's a tropical place. Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. There are several places other than Southeast Asia that, that the animals are dying or the trees are dying. This is due to chemical uh, problems. The chemtrails are now affecting the life on Earth, as you know it. They are affecting trees. Certain species of trees cannot survive uh, with uh, the introduction of some of these chemicals into the atmosphere. They are now getting 
down far enough into the atmosphere where they are reaching the tops of trees, reaching uh, into places where animals have, have a habitat. And therefore, it is a problem. And in Southeast Asia, there is... Um, one moment, please. Yes, there is a problem there due to the what when the it is a very it, are you talking about the wet areas down yes. there? Yes. Yes. That's what I thought. The rain is bringing in a lot of chemical problems to that area. Okay, that's why the animals are dying then from the poison. Yes. They are not able to handle the chemicals that are coming from that the chemtrail areas, and the that particular area uh, there is a certain chemtrail specific to that area that is not specific to the entire world and so that is another one of the problems okay there are about 10 different kinds of chemtrails and they each contain their own chemical uh consistencies so uh no, none of them are any good of course there are some that are better than others but this one seems to be very dangerous Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, One moment. There is someone here. One moment. I'm just curious. I don't know if you had mentioned it before, but what is the purpose of the chemtrails? Because I see them. The chemtrails were orig a chemtrails originated with flight. Uh, the different things that uh, the different chemicals they use for flying airplanes and this is these are the chemicals that are put into the air because they get better gas mileage as you want to call it better mileage for the planes but a lot of it is very synthetic and very harmful and some of it is actually even um, super toxic the chemtrails have been increased. Yes. Because I see them doing it during the night. I go out there and there's like chemtrails and stuff. We are trying our best to remove some of these chemicals. There are particular chemicals that we remove because they are super toxic or have a greater effect on the planet than others. And so we can let some of them enter, but we are let some of them go that are not quite as toxic as others but still eventually these will get to the surface of the planet so why is it they can't stop it Karen? because they can stop it except that that would stop uh, air travel for a while there was some earthquakes I understand about a hundred earthquakes went off in the state of Washington and then Andreas Fault is beginning to show quite a bit of movement and Late change. Can you update us on that? Yes. Um, there is a row of vortexes along the coastline that have been put there by a, a particular woman who is in tr that knows how to do these things that is holding the coastline together, 67% of it. Now, yes, there is so much tectonic activity right now all over the world. The world is experiencing a 50% increase in uh, earthquake activity right now, and it's very dangerous. And also under, uh, of course, Yellowstone National Park and these areas, you will find that animals have been affected by this as well. They, you'll find them moving from one part of the the country over there to the other part to a different part because they feel the vibration of the tectonic plates moving and they know this is a dangerous sign and so animals will change their placings due to this and that has been no, noticed quite a bit recently and also in Washington many and uh, and up into Canada as well into uh, the Canadian areas a lot of earthquakes small as they may be they are very still very dangerous uh, the San Andreas fault 
Yes, uh, there has been activity there, but we have control of that at the moment. Um, the, there will be more... Someone has placed actually more vortexes along the coastline because the, the prediction was that it will fall into the ocean up to Highway 5. And uh, that is a very... that's a lot of land. So that is being helped at this time, and we are really looking to help that in a, even a greater way at this time. And, of course, all over the planet, there are earthquakes and uh, attempted volcanic eruptions, especially in the South Pacific. There's been so many volcanic eruptions recently, it's been quite devastating to even the... Um, there's a UFO colony there that is from is from off world and they had to evac evacuate for temporarily because there was so much activity even though they're immune to it in many ways because they can uh, move through temperatures v that are greater than a volcanic temperature but the thing is the disruption there has been so great that uh, they had to move out for a, a while so that they would not be pushed around and things of this nature. So, yes? I would think that's also being mindful that guy has to go through this. This is so much part of the shift. Eliminating is not the answer. No. So, um, yes, Mother Gaia is going through a great deal of shifting. However, it is, she will keep it together. I okay, question. I, I, I had a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, um, with all these races that are assisting uh, this planet now more than ever, um, what other can you mention any other alliances or any other groups that have now start to really want to be a part of the group for near colonies? Um, to be part of us, there are three uh, applications at this time, if you want to call them that, to. Um, become part of Grukvignir and we are very close to maybe in including another civilization species into our group and um, it is but many people are uniting many groups are uniting in fact Grukvignir has united spiritually with or if you want to say communication wise with many other alliances we may have some differences in our belief systems and how we do things, but we have the same final goal. <clears throat> so in this way, we can connect to them and share information. However, we don't want to join alliances or whatever of this nature. Yes, there are many. Okay, I have Shear's question. He yes. said, we are at the half of the year in terms of potential. Does humanity achieve its best potential or at least a good one? Can you for this that year? again? In other question. words, since we are halfway through the year, um, has humanity achieved um, its potential that it could have um, up to this part of the year? That is a wonderful question, and if I had the answer to that, I would tell you. But I do not know what... I do not completely know your potential at this point. I do know much of it, but I am not sure what your full potential is, not being able to concentrate on more than the weather, the tectonic, the volcanic. I'm not politically active enough to know that answer. But I know that you are, have done a great deal of changing. That is true. That is a very true statement at this point. How about in the spiritual way? In the spiritual realm, many of you have gone through character changes due to disruptions in your lives and things of that nature which are making you stronger and more able to cope with the third dimension the way you should be able to. And also your level of understanding each other is starting to come together. 
some of you are actually getting it wherever that to give up a little of self to understand somebody else can be of a great deal of you can learn so much um, he also asked if there will be a second meeting after August a second what meeting Oh yes, there probably will be. There's usually three a year, sometimes only two. We've uh, this will be the second one coming up August first through third, and um, if there is another one, it will probably be at the end of December. Okay, um, I have a request, a personal request um, for Zenaida to occur. I yes. was wondering if you could help her with some healing on her hands. Um, yes. She's struggling yeah. with that. I will get in touch with her. Okay. And also um, for Maria, um, in her it's a bit uh, different. No, I understand what Maria is going through now. Okay. It is more emotional than anything. Yes. I understand that. And I have... Okay. I have looked in on her just recently, but she does not know that. Okay. But I did look in on her just recently. All right. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to know, um, there seems to be a lot of confusion between density and dimensions. And I was wondering if that's ever been talked about the DETs to come to a consensus. Yes, um, there is no galactic consensus on dimensions and uh, densities because uh, their perception is d each one has different perceptions and the reason for that is because they are in densities that are different perceptions than you are in yourself now for your density we explained it to you uh, and the Akashic record gave it to your planet all the different varieties of understandings so that each of you individually could understand it the way you can see it best. Now, if they were all to be put together, mm -hmm. it would be, some people think, say, dimension one, some people say dimension three or density one, density three, they would be the same. Do you understand? It would be, there would be some of these things that would come and there would probably would not be so many diverse uh, diversities, but it is not going to happen in this in your lifetime because we're more concentrated on the ascension process than teaching these kinds of things, which are really not they should not matter that much. Oh, because it people get very confused over that. They get very confused, but if they would understand how simple the ascension really is the densities wouldn't matter as much it's 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 just a, a matter of tomato tomato okay but the densities the density is ref, it's within the dimension right the densities are within the dimension yes okay and some dimensions they they misname them because their a dimension may have um, a fourth dimension is maybe a fourth density to them but if in some ways a fourth dimension is not necessarily a fourth density so it can be very confusing it depends on how it's taught okay um, and the other question I had and correct me if I'm wrong um, I get the feeling that Lyrans physically have not changed since the Orion Wars. Um, if that's so, what's what's special about the Lyrans that has allowed them for that not to happen? Well, there has been some changes, but it's not been much on the physical side. It's been more on the mental side, more on the 
uh, evolution of uh, thought processes and things of that nature more than physical evolution. Does that answer your question? Yeah, see, because from my understanding, we humans are going to change <laughs> physically. You will, but not as much as you think. Not right away. It's a slow process. It does not happen that quickly. But there, there has been changes on your planet that have been quick and have been very diverse. But that is not what is going to happen with humanity. Your changes will be slow and uh, specific. But it, it will be in the, in the physical sense, not... Yes, there will be physical changes. And that is due to what? Because of telepathy will cause that, because of the chemicals in your air and compounds, because of how the sun is going to uh, come more directly to you, your visions will be different, your skin will have to change a little bit. Yes, there will be many changes, but they will be slow and specific. Okay. Um a, a spirit had came through me, um, a very high spirit, and he spoke about um, a mutation in humanity. Um, he may not be talking physical. Or okay. was he? Can you tell me what he said? He wasn't specific whether it was physical. He did say that a mutation was going to be necessary for humanity in order oh, to go yeah. on. He is correct. Okay. So. And that is something that will be very specific, but it will be a slow process to get there. And you will see, uh, as time goes on, your skin will change, your eyes will change, uh, your ears will change, you'll use your voice less, your mouth will become smaller. But these are thousands of thousands of years of evolution okay but that's why I was asking you about how was it that the Lyrans did not because they didn't the Lyrans did not change because they did not the surrounding atmospheres and uh, physical dimensions that we were working in did not change that much whereas your planet is changing because the air is getting thinner your more sun is getting through because your atmosphere is ozone layer is disintegrating you have more chemtrails your the sun will become brighter many 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 things your skin will have to change a little bit to be able to bear the sun's uh, effect on it you, is that also where the hybridization will help hybridization will help that yes okay but you see your planet is changing at a drastic rate, and so therefore, you will your your civilization will have to change to keep up with those changes in your um, your atmosphere. Whereas our atmosphere did not change that much over the, over time, since we were living in ships for quite a while, and since are the planets that we developed, and some of them are um, made by us. We made some of our own planets, made some of our own habitats. I should say. So therefore, it's it hasn't changed that much. So there was no necess need for us to physically evolve, but mentally we needed to evolve, and so that therefore we did. Oh, okay. Now I understand. So due due to the the planet changes, it's going to be necessary for in order for humanity to survive. Correct. For the physical that, change. Yes, it makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, thank you. I, I was trying to, to understand that, um, though I did have, somehow I have the knowledge that the Lyrans have not changed. Yes, they did not change that much. The tails are getting smaller. That is the biggest change. The, the tails were once longer, but now they're no, needed, no longer needed for sensory perception. Or, uh, because we are no longer being attacked from behind the way we used to be. So therefore, there is no need for the tail, and that is the biggest part of our change. Okay. Thank you.
Um, I had one from uh, Slava. He said, hello to Kerr, about 20 days ago, I believe we were going somewhere, but I'm not sure. I remember someone so beautiful and strong, and then I remember someone spoke uh, with me so lovely and gentle, like with a part of a family. Yes. There is one named Arabella that spoke to you. She is okay. a hybrid child. Okay, and he says, I'm not sure, but perhaps it was A-L-Y-O-S-H-A. Alyosha? Yeah. I will have to, I'm not sure if that is the correct pronunciation. There are several children with similar names to that. There is Alicia, there is Alosha, there is, but there is no one called Al Alyosha, as exactly as that. But there, it could have been any of several children that have been named from their parents very similarly to that. Okay. Um, Picard, when you said Arabella, is that my hybrid child you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, okay, thanks. I just wanted to check. Thank you. Yes, it was Neil's hybrid child that visited there as well. His children are very special also. Okay. Um, I had actually had several dreams with a little girl yes. that keeps um, connecting with me. and I don't know why I feel like she's her, mine. That she's part yours? Yes. I will have to... I believe that is... One moment. I no longer am in charge of the hybridization program. There was too much for me to do, and I had to delegate that to someone else. But I still can get the information. Talalaka. Her name is Telalaka. And yes, you had something to do with her birth, yes. Okay, because she's been connecting. She if you would like up. to give her a name as well, something you can remember her by, her name is Telalaka, by her parents. And with your, you, there is some of your DNA in her. And um, well, we'll talk about that some other time. Okay, but she is young, right? She's very, very young. Yes, she's a baby. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Tucker. And that was not something that that I sanctioned, but it it did happen. And Telalaka is beautiful and wonderful, and I hope you will be happy with that. Yes. Um, yeah, she she kept showing up. I guess she just wanted me to know about her. Yes. I must go now. Thank you. Jakar, may I ask you one quick question, please? Yes, Safira, yeah. continue. Thank you. Really quick. Um, I have heard there are two physical Pleiadian healing chambers now on the earth. One is in Virginia and one in South Dakota where people can actually go lay down and receive a specific type of molecule for healing. Do you know yes. about these and are they effective as they say they, they are? They are effective, yes. They are, we are not giving them much attention because if we did, they may be closed. Okay. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. It, it would be worth a trip there, though, if you think. Yes, most definitely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. We gotta let Tucker go. Yeah. So much love and you. namaste. Thank you for the update, Tucker, all the information. Have much a wonderful love. day.
Hello. Hello, Jim. Hey, how are you? Good, good, good. I don't think we are way that. over. <laughs> we went way over? Yes. <laughs> oh, what time is it? Oh, my. Well, we had Logan in between, which was pretty cool. Yes. So that's good. Thing. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you for the water. Thank you. I, I drank all my water while Logan was talking. <laughs> thank okay. you, Jim. Well, yes, there we go. Thank you. Should and, we do um, our blessing? Thank you, everybody. Is there a final prayer that someone would yeah. like to say? Let's let's do a blessing and then move. Yes, on. we'll do a quick one t today yes. since we're running so late. Yes, let's do a quick one. Akiki o kolono no na koto koro kalali o koto na lua kalali a katakari o koto koro a niri kiki ki o koro nari a kalali o koro to koro koto koto a nari ki ki o no lua ri 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 a koto to lua la ki tanari ki a kari ki o no lu koro koro nari a kari a koto lu koro a kari a katari a kala toro no lu lua kari a toro lu lua na ki ki a ri a ku the light of the stars is bright at times, but in other days you cannot see them at all for the clouds. This is sometimes the way of life, but we know that you are going to look through the stars, through the clouds, as you continue on your journey. Find them no at all costs the way to guide you, the way to find your way to the other places that are worthwhile getting to. And your journey will be happy, rough at times, but there will be times when you will decide that this is of God. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else wish to say anything else? I've got a blessing. Okay. Usunu kuatini ise wa kolo oshne kiati sino kolo lunyo siya tati kani kias kiatali ya toro usunu kuto asala ayat kolo lunyo siya tini ya da kaya sawa olo shiri kiti siniki asawa tono no osele kiana ya na uto sukuto shne kia. Ah, this is a beautiful day. Many of us are connected. Many of us feel the love that is coming from outside our planet to help us to grow in love for each other. Let us be a community. Let us find our community love and share with one another the peace and joy that has been meant to be from the beginning of time. Thank you. I would like, to thank, I would like to thank Sabrina because, Sabrina, you juggled all the questions and everybody very masterfully. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, Safira. And thank you for being here today. We miss you. <laughs> You're welcome. It was fun. It was awesome. Thank great you, everybody. See, great Have a see wonderful you day, you. everybody. Yay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jim, oh. so much. Great to see you channeling again in person. Awesome. <laughs> um, I we here next week, I think, as far as I know. Great. All right, awesome. I'd like to remind everybody about the Solstice Retreat in Hot Springs, Arkansas, coming up soon. I posted links everywhere. You can get it on the YouTube page, uh, Hume Colony. Six weeks, six more weeks to the event. I'm um, going. I'll be there. Jim is going. Will is going. I'm going. Bunches of are going. I'm going too. Safir is going. All right. Awesome. Um, for those that are going, um, please uh, check with the website. Uh, there's a deposit. There's other information, other things going on there. So please uh, go to the links provided and uh, look at all the stuff. Will's um, going. Will's going. <laughs> Will has to go. <laughs> no escape for Will. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for everything, and we Thank will see you, you again next week. Thank okay. you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. We really.